trigger warning. None of this information has been officially confirmed by NRS. All information is being provided by someone who claims to have inside information on the upcoming MK12 project. Please take these videos with a huge grain of salt and enjoy them as they are. These leaks are not official. By watching beyond this point, you agree to accept this content as entertainment only. The Wave Report. Oh, and if you think you're going to hate in my comment sections, you do know the chances of you getting hit by a bus and banished to the nether realm increase by 341%. <laughs> Challenge Shang Tsung if you must, loser. Today we got a lot to go over. Future NRS games being delayed, Liu Kang's story finally over, Conquest Mode, Counseled Injustice, Ed Boon confirms four MK12 fighters, indirectly confirms Striker, and loading times in MK12. We got a lot to unpack here today, and we're gonna do that right after this intro. Let's go. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, The Wave Report. If you're watching this video for the first time, I highly recommend that you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications as this is your brand new and favorite place for Mortal Kombat content. You're only gonna get it here and you will get it daily. Don't believe me? Check the stat book. Now, as you can tell by the title of this video, we got a lot to talk about when it comes to MK12, and I'm going to be using some footage that I'm gonna be putting on your screen because you know I love to back up my facts just like I did with my old Naga uh, documentary and my Shinnok documentary. By the way, I truly appreciate you guys watching the old Naga documentary. It did fantastic. It's over 40,000 views. Now, if you can go do the same thing for the Shinnok documentary, Please do that. Um, it is appearing as a card on this video somewhere, and it also will appear at the end of this video. Now, for you new viewers, I would like to take the time out, and I would like to welcome you if this is your very first documentary of you watching it on my channel. So let me go ahead and do a proper introduction. I would like to welcome you to Mortal Kombat 12, What to Expect Documentary. We're going to talk about what to expect and what's next. Now, let's go ahead and get directly into our first topic. We're going to talk about what happened, what caused everything to get thrown off. Now, we all know what happened in the world that affected us globally. I don't want to use that word here on YouTube. But now that you know what I'm talking about, I'm going to put a clip here on your screen to let you know that Mortal Kombat 11 was done. It was in the aftermath stage by the time... All of this took effect before everything shut down at that point. The only other game that was being developed at that time was Injustice 3. And with Injustice 3, it got so bad to the point where it was canceled. And remind you, when you're dealing with games like that, you got to hold meetings. You got to get licenses. You got to do all of that stuff. And by the world being shut down, people were not able to do that. So it only made sense for them to work on Mortal Kombat 12 on top of that. There was talks of WB selling its game division. So everything pointed to Mortal Kombat 12 being made, which made so much sense because they don't have to go talk to people about licenses or anything like that. You know why? Because Ed Boon and them, they have the licenses. You don't need to go talk to anybody. It's his creation. But when you're dealing with WB characters, you got to have a meeting with everybody about every character and get everything approved. So this is the reason why Mortal Kombat 12 has already been started being worked on and things of that nature and why you have not seen it in Justice 3, this is what broke the cycle. Now, even though we did not get a game, more time is a good thing. And I'm gonna to explain to you why it's a good thing. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this clip on your screen and let Ed Boon explain from his own mouth what was done and what happened during that time with Mortal Kombat. So pay close attention to what he says and I'll be right back with the rest of my commentary. Here you go. Uh, with the game, first of all, I think it's uh, polite to ask, how are you doing right now, given the events of the world and the uh, isolation, how's things in Ed's world? I think my world is probably similar to most of the people at uh, NetherRealm, you know, working from home, doing a lot of uh, meetings, you know, 
communicating through all of the, 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 the tools that are available, the, the Zooms and the Slacks and the Microsoft Teams and all the, the different uh, means of communicating. Still to some extent adjusting, even though it's been like three months, to uh, this new normal that we have. What's it been like to have to launch something like Aftermath in the midst of this? Uh, I imagine a lot of the kind of camaraderie and energy that a studio needs to get to the finish line and then enjoy the fact that you've put something out is not as easy to come by. So what's it been like for you and as a team, like what's the temperature been like having launched this? It was it was different. We were in a situation where we were pretty much done with the main content that was consisted in Aftermath, you know, the story mode, the three additional characters, and we were in, you know, QA testing and, you know, looking for bugs, pretty much wrapping things up in a sense when everything hits. So it's not like we had to do a lot of motion capture or, or you know, content creation uh, part of the game. Even still, I was surprised how, how the team rallied together so well uh, in the circumstance. And, you know, again, our IT department was like, you know, miracle workers, how they got us all working from home so quickly. What's the response been like to Aftermath? Obviously it's something unique for the studio. You guys have traditionally kind of put out new characters and content around that. This is the first time you've really put out a meaty story expansion. What's the reaction to that been like? And what do you think you've learned from doing that? It's been great. You know, we really kind of went all in and said, let's, you know, let's just really end the story with a bang and do something that's unexpected. All right, so let's get into the details as to why Mortal Kombat 12 has been picked over Injustice, and we're going to use numbers. Now, Mortal Kombat X sold 10 million when it came out. Mortal Kombat 11 sold 12 million when it came out. Now, several years ago, the Mortal Kombat franchise was worth $5 billion, y'all. $5 billion. That amount grew in the last six years. It's now worth $12 billion. I lie to you not. So, Injustice sold 424,000 copies during its release back in 2013. Now, that was the only game released during that month to sell more than 250K, so shout out to them for that. However, Injustice 2 came out and sold double. They did 500K out the gate. Then they ended at a total of $1.5 million. Now, in the first three months, they was able to accumulate that. Now, also, it was the highest grossing console game of 2017, and it was the ninth best selling game of all time. So, yes, Injustice was doing some damage, but with everything that was happening that was going on, there's there was no more time for them to continue to build that franchise. That's not to say it ain't never going to come back because it will. They will get back on track. It was definitely making money, but not nearly as enough as Mortal Kombat. Now, let's check out the Mortal Kombat movie. The movie cost $55 million to make, but it made 83.6 mil, which is considered a success in Hollywood, and it will get a sequel. Now, when it came to the Injustice movie, the Injustice movie that released on May 3rd, 2019, the film did get positive reviews from critics, but the internet was not liking it at all. Now, people praised the animation and the voice performances, although many criticized the story for being too familiar to the games now the film was also a box office success grossing 695 million against a budget of 190 million so you can see injustice had a bigger budget than mortal kombat even with the games it had a bigger budget let's get into that better graphics injustice 2 more line of dialogue injustice 2 Better story mode, Injustice 2. Full character customization, Injustice 2. With Mortal Kombat being NRX's flagship title, you would think it would be the premium, the uh, premier series, series I should say, but evidently it's not. Now, I know a lot of you gonna disagree with me when it comes to graphics. I do think Mortal Kombat 11 looks a lot better than Injustice, but I'm just going off what the majority are saying. The majority are saying that it looks a lot better than uh than mortal kombat 11 does so my whole point for this was to point out that injustice has had the biggest budget that's why it had full customer characterization in the injustice game and mortal kombat 11 had like a small one we only got 
palette swaps and was able to swap weapons. We never really got the customize like you could in Injustice, but guess what? Now that Injustice is no longer hanging around, we will possibly be able to get that because Mortal Kombat is a guaranteed moneymaker. Yes, Injustice did good, but Injustice did not have a video game franchise. Mortal Kombat been around for 30 plus years. So which one would you depend on to make money when you just lost billions of dollars due to a global situation that had happened? You're going to pick Mortal Kombat. That's what you're going to pick. So with that being said, y'all, I just wanted to point that out to let you know that that's the reason why we're going with MK12 and that. Now, I don't want y'all to worry because rumor has it that both of these games will be releasing at the same time. Now, I don't see a problem with the games releasing at the same time. They're two completely different fan bases. So I think that's something they should do. Like I said, it's just a rumor. Does not mean that it's true. But if they decided to release those, release those games at the same time, that would be great instead of having the games compete with each other. Because some people like Warner Brothers, some people like Mortal Kombat. With two different audiences, they need to stop trying to mix those audiences together and make one like the other and the other one like the other they want to do the guest characters that's fine but if they want injustice to grow as a franchise they need to put it out there so that way it can sell and it can sell good it's going to need some competition and what better way to have competition than with mortal kombat so you can match up those numbers so mind you Again, Mortal Kombat, 30 plus years. Injustice, only a few years. So you only could expect for them to go with the money maker. That's the reason why MK12 is the talk of the town right now. And they said it was a great idea to go with MK12 because like I said, they gotta recoup that money that they lost. You gotta look at it from this point of view. They were paying people to work on Injustice. All of that was shut down. People were sent home to work from home. But when it came to Mortal Kombat 12, all of that was already done. You heard Ed Boon say that for himself. They were just touching on a few bugs and things of that nature and only had just a little bit of small meetings and stuff to do via Zoom. You know, and it's been three months and he's still trying to get used to that. At the point of that, at the time of that interview, it's been three months at that point and he was trying to get used to that. So you can see the adjustment problem for a lot of people, but Mortal Kombat went untouched. So now they can go directly into the new one instead of being behind schedule or shut down like Injustice was. Now we're gonna get into Liu Kang and why his story is completely over and by God, thank you. I'm sick and tired of Liu Kang's story. So let me go ahead and let Ed Boon tell it and then I'm gonna come behind him and follow with the assist. Let's get it. Do something that's unexpected, which like you said, we, we've never done something like before. We always try to do something new and unexpected with every iteration of Mortal Kombat just to really keep thing, people on their toes. So without spoiling too much about the game, um, you mentioned the end of the story. Is that how you're kind of like thinking of the, the story in this game and Aftermath? Do you see it as a definitive end? Because obviously for fans, they've been tracking since the reboot, as we call it, like, you know, the kind of progression and it feels cohesive, but there's almost like a definitive full stop at the end of this. Is that how you guys want to treat it? Yes. The story that we've told, you know, which I guess you can summarize as, as Liu Kang's journey in a sense, in my head is 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 done, you know, and uh, we're not going to be expanding, you know, you're like, oh, and then this happened and then we reset again. And, you know, like like it's it's uh, we really feel like like that's the end of that time. All right, so you heard it from the man himself. Big Head Liu Kang's journey is over. They are creating a new timeline. I believe this will be the fourth timeline. Correct me in the comment section below, but I do know they're creating a new timeline. No more freaking resets, none of that. This is a brand new fresh start where they can tell a brand new story that they've never told before instead of trying to retcon all of the other things that happened. Now, let's go ahead and get into this. Since Liu Kang's journey is over, the big question is, who is the new chosen one? It's not Kang Lao because Kang Lao is going to be a time warrior more than likely because, you know, he just like Vegeta. He trying to keep up with everything, uh, you know, Liu Kang doing. So you got, you know who went on the journey? Kai. Remember Kai? Look at this on your screen right here. If you don't know who Kai is, then you need to go check out this episode of The Lore so you can catch up on that. Yeah. Self-promotion. I had to. Let's get back to it. So yeah, Kai went on a journey to find himself. He traveled everywhere. 
Now, how dope would it be for Kai to take over Liu Kang's spot? But guess what? Kai was meant to be the black Liu Kang. Those are Ed Boon's words, not mine. He was meant to be another version of Liu Kang. That is fact. So he was pushed off and he was cut from games like he was cut from Daily Alliance and he was cut from Mortal Kombat X. He was cut from both of those. But they were not able to use him because Kong Lao was so crucial to retelling the story that they were telling. So they could not use him. So now that we're on a new timeline, they can tell a completely new story without having to worry about plot holes, retcons, reboots, resets, anything of that nature. So this is a new timeline. I'm going to keep saying it. Why do you think Chronicle kept saying a new era, a new era? They kept saying it the whole story mode. They wanted to put that in your head that we were getting ready for a new era. And this is a new era of Netherrealm. So we'll be getting brand new characters and we're going to be getting new stories where more people can shine. It's time for Big Head Liu Kang to take a break, you know, and I think we've seen enough of the same villains. I'm super especially tired of Ball Head Quan Chi or whatever, you know, so it's time for new villains and funny Shinnok. Shinnok mega funny. He be going off on people. He be like, you insignificant piece of scup. Like, yo, he funny. But let's get back on track here. So Liu Kang journey is over. I want to pass this question off to you guys in the comment section and i want you to pause it real quick and answer this question who do you think is a good fit for the chosen one spot i want you to tag this video tag it at 15 minutes and 55 seconds so that way i know you're responding directly to this part of the video and i will be doing more of that in the video so because i want you guys to communicate throughout the video now with that part being said, if you're watching this video live, it's being premiered, you can answer the questions as it goes along. We can do it that way too. Really quick, I want you to smash that subscribe button, turn on post notifications, so you always can be notified when I upload MK content, because I do this daily. I rarely take breaks, but when I do, you best believe I'm coming back with a banger video. So, you in the MK content, this is where you need to be. But for me, I'm going to go ahead and call it. Kai is finally going to get the time to shine. Him and his Graka knives and his renegade kick will finally be making a debut, in my opinion, in story mode. That's just where I want to put it. So let's go ahead and let Ed Boon take over from here. And then I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary about Conquest. Aftermath ends. Um... Do you guys still have interest in exploring Mortal Kombat outside of the fighting game genre? I mean, I know a lot of fans always bring up Shaolin Monks, but not without spoiling it again, the ending of Aftermath is basically the setup for Shaolin Monks again, <laughs> kind of like another adventure between two Shaolin. Yeah. Um, is that something that you want to do? Are we going to get a Mortal Kombat rhythm game, whatever it may be? <laughs> to the exact words of your question, when you say, do you think about it? Absolutely, absolutely. We're thinking about it all the time. All right, this is what things start to get spicy at right here. So, as mentioned before, I told you guys that Mortal Kombat 11 was a complete beta game. It was a beta game to see how everything was going to run and how people were going to respond, but mostly to see how things were going to run. Now, the crypt ran perfectly. They were able to auto-generate the crypt to keep people from using online guides, and they were able to allow us to use a demo trial of Conquest Mode. So basically what we played was conquest mode because they're looking to bring conquest mode back. Now that we have better memory, better graphics, and we can have co-op conquest mode. So if they cannot do Shaolin Monks again, then they can do it by inputting conquest mode to where we can meet up with other people. Now I'm not sure, but if you guys remember this, but there were leaks that came out for a Mortal Kombat 11's crypt where in that crypt, you were able to hide stuff for other players to find it. Now, to give you a quick trip down memory lane, I'm going to go ahead and put this data mine on your screen. As you see here, look at the animation Cassie is doing. She's pulling something out of the ground. This was supposed to be the Crypt data mine expansion. Now, I'm not going to touch on that too much in this video because I'm going to make a separate video and I'm going to full screen it so that way you can be able to read the files and see everything that you need to see or I'll make it bigger than what it is. But for now, we're going to go ahead and continue the rest of this um, documentary 
documentary but be on the lookout for that data mine video be sure to like this video if you want to see that if you caught what i did there if you know then you know but yeah so conquest mode is where we're going for mortal kombat 12 it looked great now if you look here at your screen you're able to see just us kind of fooling around in the crypt it looks fantastic this game has so much replay value just like mortal kombat deception had tons of replay value mortal kombat 11 was a beta stage for mortal kombat 12 to be the ultimate fighting game now that we're in 2021 we're not in 2005 anymore we do not have the same limitations that we had before on video games budgets are a lot bigger so ed boone is looking to become to rightfully claim his title as the grand theft auto of fighting games because mk started all of this they the ones that had the news cycles popping but i'm gonna let ed boone go ahead and take over and i'm gonna come back with the rest to my commentary catch you in a second was a really um good example of it the process of making it happen has been a little bit more challenging you know we've we're, we're really just one studio and we did a game called injustice and that did well and then we did a sequel that did even better and so unfortunately we can't do you know all the things that we want to do at the same time and so this is what I was alluding to earlier. They can't do everything that they wanted to do at the same time. So they had to put one game out here, one game out there. I think it would be dope if they put it out at the same time, but unfortunately that's not possible. And they have, like he said, they're only a small team. They're a small studio. So with everything being stopped, when it comes to injustice, they all were able to focus on Mortal Kombat because look at it this way. Let's say they were working on injustice and then the global thing happened. Everybody had to go home. Days are being missed. Time is being missed. The project gets so caught behind to the point where it get canceled. This has happened with TV shows. This happened with several TV shows that caused stuff to get canceled. For example, Empire is one of my shows that got canceled due to um due to the global situation that was going on as well as a couple of other TV shows that were canceled also. So this is affected the movie market, TV shows, video games, everybody was affected. So Ed Boon was like, "Screw it. We might as well start on Mortal Kombat 12. Let's go ahead and pick up on Mortal Kombat 12 because they're starting from scratch. They were able to start Mortal Kombat 12 doing the global situation that we went through, so they're not behind. They had more time. You know, like he said, there's a lot of things he want to do but he could not do due to time restraints and him working at home and the other members working at home they can work on this up to four or five o'clock in the morning they don't have to worry about legal breaks or taking breaks they can work at their own pace and i'm not gonna lie i work from home i'm a full-time youtuber so it's so much more comfortable working from home than working from a job i can get up and go make me something to eat and come back and kind of make myself comfortable i can control the air i don't have to deal with annoying people and it inspires me to make this hard content that you're watching right now because I'm motivated and I'm in my comfort zone which allows me to think better also instead of working around other people that are distracting you you got all these restrictions and work rules you got to follow all types of things you know so if I want to chill and talk to somebody or text during work I can so my point is that we are going to be getting something extremely special because if Injustice stopped, you got to think that that budget went over to the new Mortal Kombat game because Mortal Kombat did tremendous numbers, Mortal Kombat 11, and the movie property did even better. So you would have to think that they're paying money to get these new guest characters. Like I told you, be on the lookout for Michael Myers because Michael Myers will be making his debut in Mortal Kombat 12. We're going to see Neo. We're also going to be able to see those type of people join the game. I'm talking about Harley Quinn. I'm talking about Xena. I'm talking about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. These are people that Ed want. Ed has openly said that he would love to work with some of these people in the game. So pay attention because it's about to get real in the MK verse. And I love the fact that Ed is taking a stance to go forward. He's always been one of the people, him and his team, to think outside the box. Now, with that being said, do me a favor, make sure you uh, smash that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. I'm so excited. I'm tripping over my words over here, y'all. But look, let me go ahead and put Ed back on the screen, and then I'm going to come back with my commentary. Hey, yo, Ed, go ahead and take it away for me, my boy. Complex than that. One of the other things I want to talk about is um, bringing back characters that, you know, are maybe lesser 
known or, or haven't been explored properly like Fujin's uh, uh, a, a big one for this one and Shiva as well what was the thinking behind that and are there any specific characters that you wanted to bring back that you weren't able to but uh, hope that people will still love and, and, and look into enjoying a bit more there are there always are you know if you count there's probably about 80 there's probably more now Mortal Kombat characters that we've released in various versions some are staples to Mortal Kombat Sub Zero, Scorpion, Raiden, Luke. All right, so as you heard Ed Boon say himself, some people are just staples in every game. So, yeah, he basically confirmed those people that he just named. But I know a lot of y'all in the comments are going to be like, bull crap. He never said they were confirmed. You're just making stuff up. Click bay. Click bay. Don't worry. I got a video clip for you where he says out of his own mouth that <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to tell you what he says. You're going to have to watch the video. I'm going to make you watch it until that clip comes up so you can see it from there. But, yeah, I could tell you this right now. Mortal Kombat 12 is going to be one of the best games. That's the real game right there. This, like I said, nothing but a beta. But bringing back characters is a great idea. So I'm telling you this. Expect to see Serena. Expect to see Aramak. Expect to see Smoke. Expect to see Sector. Expect to see Cyrax. Expect to see Chameleon. Now... Chameleon is a huge question mark, but I do got a feeling we're going to get Chameleon. These people that we did not get or see for a while, we're going to get them. But I also want you to understand that Ed Boon and his team is doing a great job at creating lore behind these characters. Mind you, all of these characters are palette swaps at the end of the day, and some of them have not fully been developed yet. So now that he got the other characters fully developed, such as Scorpion, he has a lot of background, Sub-Zero, Raiden, Liu Kang, Sonya, Jax, like people have really good backgrounds. Now it's time to move on to get these other characters full background. They literally learned this from scratch. Like they were able to give Cassie a background and give Jackie a background. You know, Jackie and Cassie, both they both have boyfriends. They got famous parents. They're in the special forces. That was kind of easy for them to write. So now it's time for them to bring other characters back and give them a good background for example shiva i didn't know a lot of stuff about shiva until mortal kombat 11 shorty out here putting hands and feet on everybody you know and she beating up all of the men she better than kentaro and goro she out here just slumping people and i also learned that she's loyal and she take care of her people and she's very remorseful about you know doing things but she want to make sure she do the right things but she'll also scrap with you in a heartbeat that's some good backstory so this is why they're going to rotate the characters so they can continue to build these other characters even though we love them regardless we love havoc which who will be in the game by the way havoc will be in 12 that's fan demand the same way you guys had a lot of fan demand for melina trust me ed boom pays attention to fan demand so you will be getting havoc havoc will be in the game you know just as well as people are requesting taven and they're requesting dagon now will melina be in 12 that's kind of a big question mark because she's extremely popular i mean i would put her in the game because it will help with sales right out the gate that is the best thing to do is to put her in the game but look check this out again subscribe turn on post notifications i'm gonna go ahead and turn it back over to ed boom and then i'm gonna come back with more of my commentary we really about to get into this y'all hey yo ed take it away sub-zero scorpion raiden Liu Kang. some are um not as frequently seen fujin striker shiva um and not that they not that we don't love them as much but um we always have to have Scorpion and Sub-Zero in a Mortal Kombat game. And uh, because of that, it's almost like a like a revolving door. You know, everybody's uh, everybody gets their chance in the sun and then maybe we give somebody a break. And then when they come back, players are that much more happier. To All right. Now, those for you saying that 
Well, he didn't confirm it. This, this. That's the clip that I was talking about right there. He literally just confirmed Sub-Zero, Scorpion, Raiden, and Liu Kang. Now, we can add on to that. Let's go ahead and add the Great Kong Lao because we saw him at the ending of Mortal of Liu Kang's ending and Kitana. So, we can go ahead and add Kitana up in there too. So, so far, that's Sub-Zero, Scorpion, Raiden, Liu Kang, Kitana, and the Great Kong Lao. That is six people. We're going to also add Aramak. We're going to add um, Smoke. We're going to add um, the two people I just named. Who was it? Who was it? Sector. We're going to add Cyrax. And we're going to add Serena. And we're going to add Kai. So you can see how the roster basically explains itself. But let's talk about this. You notice that he talked about um, Fujin, Shiva, and Striker. Who did we get in Mortal Kombat 11 as DLC? We got Fujin and we got Shiva. Now, we did not get Striker because there was a lot of things going on with Black Lives Matter and police brutality at that time. So it was not a good idea to release Striker and have him performing police brutality on people like Jax and Jackie and things of that nature. So that was, you know, the PR team saying, hey, we should not release Striker. But trust me, Striker was supposed to be in a game. He will be in Mortal Kombat 12. That is him indirectly confirming it because because two out of three of the characters that he named was in Mortal Kombat 11 as a DLC. So I look forward to playing with Striker in the new game. I can't wait to see what his new story is. And also, as mentioned, we're jumping 500 years into the past. We're going to meet the Great Kong Lao. Now, they're going to do this story a little different. Now, I was told a lot of people was not going to be in the game, a lot of our favorites, and that they were going to be replaced by ancestors. Now, NRS is deciding how to handle that. My video I made yesterday, I explained that they're going to use the palette swap thing, meaning if you click on Johnny Cage, you can go and apply the costume of his great ancestor or vice versa. That's how it'll work for ancestors. So the same thing they did, like I said, with Sub-Zero and they did it with the, uh, the Mortal Kombat movie skins where you can play as a completely different person with the same voices and that type of stuff. So basically that, you know, and um, also I just wanted to throw this in there really quickly that Cassie made a reference to Buffy the Vampire Slayer who will be in the game. Now I'm gonna make a separate video on that because I don't have that clip queued up right now, but I wanted to throw that in there, but I will be making a video on her joining the game as DLC. So you most certainly wanna keep looking forward to that. So hopefully you paying attention to what Ed Boon's saying. Mind you, he liked to throw hints. He liked to put stuff out there to see if people can catch it. And the fact that nobody caught that when he did this interview of him um, saying that those people were confirmed and the fact that everybody else was added to DLC except for Striker. So yeah, police brutality is the reason why he was not able to make it into Mortal Kombat 11. And I'm sure they have some good content. So you can expect Striker to either be A, on the roster, or B, DLC. But I could tell you it would be a head scratcher if him, Kai, Serena, and the robots are not on the game. But I'm going to let Ed Boon take it away and I'm going to come back with more of my commentary. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Are you excited about where the technology for next gen is going? I know you guys work uh, closely with Unreal Engine and modified engines around that. Um, based on what you've seen so far and the whole uh, load time thing, what do you yeah. think that means for stories the way you tell them? Because obviously you guys are great at framing stories and seamlessly moving between combat and and uh, like cinematic moments, but what do you think, uh, what excites you about next gen? I think everybody's excited about, you know, the expected jump in, you know, fidelity of the graphics, you know, the, the you know, frame rates and lighting effects and all that stuff, that's that's to be expected. Um, and I, I've, I've said this, you know, multiple times before is that I'm actually arguably more excited about the, the, the fast load times than I am about the graphics, you know. All right, so this the part where we get back into Conquest and the Crypt. You heard Ed Boon himself, he don't care about the graphics, he's worried about the loading time. Why would he be worried about the loading time for a fighting game? You wanna know why? Because he wants to bring back Conquest mode. 
conquest mode was extremely good you know why because conquest mode allowed them to tell a super deep long and interactive story that's why it was done with the other games back in the day them conquest modes was amazing deceptions conquest mode was out of the world it was out of this world um when you had to play as who we played as Shujinko, and then you had to play as Taven in the next one. It was out of this world. It introduced us to Taven. It introduced us to his whole story. So I definitely can see them bringing that back because in Mortal Kombat 11, they did not have to give us the crypt that they gave us. They could have gave us the same crypt they gave us in MKX, or they could have went back to the crypt that they gave us in Deadly Alliance. They could have did that, but they chose not to. They literally worked on that. They designed the characters, designed that entire map. Do you think they designed that map for nothing? No. That entire crypt can be reused again for another game. They built an entire map. They built Shang Tsung's whole island. So imagine what we're going to get next time. The forest, Outworld, Netherrealm. They set in this thing up to be massively huge to where you can travel between realms. And I also could see it being like a Grand Theft Auto Online, Mortal Kombat Online, where you're always online accepting challenges. You're going around finding new gear pieces and you kind of run into people in Outworld. And if you meet somebody and do like a little secret thing with them, you can um, unlock a secret card or forge secret items and trade items with people and things of that nature. That is where Ed Boon is looking to take this franchise. He's looking to take it to the next level. He's always 10 to 15 steps ahead of people. If he cannot get something right, he won't even half ass do it. He won't. He's going to do everything that he possibly can to make sure he gets what he wants for the people. Like, for example, we got terminated in the game. He was not able to get Arnold to do the voice, but I'm not going to lie. The person who did Arnold voice sound just like him. When I'm playing the game, I don't even think that it's a different voice actor. And if I would have never found out, I would have never known that it was a different voice actor and not Arnold playing the Terminator. You know, so he's really good at what he do. And by him being able to get Spawn in the game and get the original voice actor and get the Mortal Kombat voice actions to come in, Ed loves his product and he's going to do everything he can to make sure it succeed. It'll be easy for him to kick his feet back and collect money, but he not on that. He's a true gaming fan at heart. That's just Ed. Now that we got that out of the way, we got more stuff that we're going to get into. Hopefully you guys enjoying this. Again, smash the subscribe button and turn on post notifications because I don't want you to miss none of this exclusive content content that i'm giving you here on this channel also feel free to super thanks the video or super chat the video i truly would appreciate the donations and um yeah that's all i gotta say on that part hey yo ed come take over real quick and then i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna speak to y'all with my commentary afterwards let's get it you know there's a uh, when you've made enough games you've kind of developed a understanding of the limitations that you have to do with every feature you know there's a finite amount of memory finite amount of time that it takes to load into that memory and you 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 work around those restrictions you know and try to mask that load as elegantly as possible mm -hmm. suddenly a lot of that burden has been lifted you heard it for yourself he said suddenly that burden has been lifted you know have no longer have to worry about those things that happens with the games when it comes to loading because a lot of you don't know this but if you are a game developer or game designer then you already know that you guys use things to keep us distracted while other things load in the background such as ram you know so for those of you who are not game developers you would not know that but making the game is extremely hard when you're limited to a certain amount of space that you can use. Look where we are now. We got ultra Blu-ray in these gaming consoles. We can save games that are like two gigabyte. I mean, 200, what is it? 200 gigabytes, 300 gigabytes, 500 gigabytes. There is so much space on these, system now, on these systems now to the point where they can make games as large as they want. Look how large Grand Theft Auto is. And then we also can swap out the drives for larger space, which is the most amazing part about it. So 
Remember back in the day we used to have those disc games that came that said disc one and disc two? No longer have to do that anymore. We don't have to do that. So I'm excited to see what Ed has planned. I love the direction that he's taking NRS. He's always been the man. Him and John Tobias too. And I want to tell you, John Tobias, you're not sneaky. We know you went and got a job with Netherrealm. You're back over there working at WB. You're working at WB, I think it's San Diego. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think he's back at San Diego. So yes, John Tobias will be giving his input on Mortal Kombat 12. Him and Ed are still great friends. I'm pretty sure they have conversations all the time about what to do with the franchise and what to do with the characters. They both created it. It's their baby. They've been doing this for a long time and anybody would love to see their product succeed, correct? So that's exactly what's going to happen with Mortal Kombat in general and Mortal Kombat 12. This also gives them the opportunity to bring back other modes. Don't be surprised if you're playing Mortal Kombat 12 and you see chess combat come back or motor combat come back. But I can tell you they are looking to implement the test your might and the test your sight into the loading screens or to make them some type of bonuses so if you're playing combat lead and you win five combats in a row then you will be able to get a test your might screen or a test your sight and whatever you get under either one of those cups you can get it as a reward now i will have more information on that as soon as i get more but i just wanted to put that out there really quickly but back to these time strengths and limitations you need to understand that if you're not an mk fan now is the time to be alive to be an mk fan we're in the year 2021 we have the best technology the best technology we have 5g on top of that we have different things that's going to allow us to take these games all the way to its maximum potential now a lot of people don't have a ps5 yet due to everything that's going on or the new xbox but guess what everybody will be getting one because sony is looking to make sure that those things are out by holidays same thing as microsoft so a lot of companies are not releasing new games just yet they're holding off on a lot of those games so if you don't see any new games come out until 2023 or 2024 that's because they're waiting for that chip shortage to evaporate so they can get the sales that they want so that can also be a reason why you see some games delayed now mortal kombat 12 from what i'm told is expected to be announced in 2022 and then released in 2023 that's what i've been told now that can change at any time at any second same thing with injustice so we just got to stay patient and we got to stay focused on what we're doing but when it comes to these consoles Ed Boon knows exactly what he's doing, and that's why I pick NetherRealm Studios as my designated location when it comes to fighting games. Simple as that, hands down. Can't question me on that. Make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications. I'm going to let Ed go ahead and take it away and come back with some more of that commentary. Hey, yo, Ed, go ahead and take it away, my boy. And so you, 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 you need to clear your head and go, oh, there's a whole new world of things that we can do that I suspect even now some developers haven't thought of. That, you know, a new idea will come to mind maybe in the second generation or wave of games that comes out for these systems. And that is going to be, I, I think, potentially, you know, the biggest thing that will change in terms of games design for these next generation consoles. I agree. He's absolutely right. He's absolutely right. Things will change. There will be a massive shift in gaming. Look, Grand Theft Auto did it. They did it with Grand Theft Auto 3 and turned that into a global product. That damn game has sold more. It's the highest selling entertainment property ever. That is fact. And Ed Boon is looking to reach those levels. Name another fighting game that had everything that Deception had. The De Deception had chess. Deception had Mortal Kombat. Deception had uh, Conquest Mode, which is RPG. Deception had fighting. Deception had, um, what is it, Test Your Might and all of this other stuff. Point being, Ed was one of the first people to put all of that stuff in a fighting game. That changed the entire landscape. The only difference between then and now is one, technology was bad back then. We had to focus on memory and restraints. That's number one. Number two, there was not as nearly as many people interested in video games when Deception came out. That is fact. 
if you look it up yourself you'll be able to find that the video game market has increased by a couple of billion since deception came out there's more people playing games now than it was then mind you if you're watching this video you were either a child a teenager or in your very early 20s at that time imagine how many people has been born between the release date of deception up to now for example grand theft auto has been out for how long since 2013 i believe some people were babies i'm gonna tell you this short story i used to play grand theft auto with my son in my lap until he would you know go to sleep guess what my son is 11 years old and he plays grand theft auto now i know a lot of you probably ain't gonna agree with that but he's fully monitored when he plays the game so chill out in the comments yeah he plays the game so it comes to tell you that new gamers are being birthed all day every day they are being birthed so i definitely get where he's coming from and this is why he's going to be one of the people that take the fighting game community to the next level he's already hosting tournaments he's giving people opportunities he's finally entered the tournament scene to be taken serious mind you they had mkx mkx was at tournaments but it was seen more as a fast-paced, cartoony, beat-em-up, trap-you type of game. But they corrected that in Mortal Kombat 11. But the core fans want the Mortal Kombat X gameplay as well as Mortal Kombat 9 gameplay is what they want. So the only logical thing to do is to make 9, X, and 12, oh, okay, I should say and 11, into one game. Now, will they bring back the run button for Mortal Kombat 12? I don't think so. I don't think they should if they do running should be an option make it an option that you can turn on and turn off when you're creating the match or accepting the match that would really give people the option and on what level they would like to play or make running a feature that you have to pay for to put on your character i think that would be pretty pretty dope now listen I'm going to go ahead and put Ed back up here and we're going to touch on some different stuff and move this documentary forward. So uh, like, subscribe, comment, Ed, take it away for me. Appreciate it. Uh, Mortal Kombat Deception actually is easily the most um, aggressive uh, approach that we've had to making a, a fighting game. The story in Mortal Kombat Deception uh, starts up exactly where the last Mortal Kombat game left off. Uh, the player can see exactly what happened to the deadly alliance of uh, Shang Tsung and Quan Chi and then it kind of takes off from there and introduces the whole Dragon King storyline as well as this other um, uh, kind of Sajinko character storyline that we uh, are introducing in Deception. All right so let me explain what you just saw. So basically, this is what's going to happen with Mortal Kombat 12. At the end of Mortal Kombat 11, we already got the cliffhanger of Liu Kang talking to the great Kong Lao. We got that already, right? So with that being said, like Deception, we were introduced, like he said, to the Dragon King and Shujinko and the other people we were introduced to. So in Mortal Kombat 12, we're going to be introduced to new characters and new villains. And this is where the Elder Demons come in at. Now, I'm told that the Elder Demons are supposed to play a huge part in Mortal Kombat 12. Now, I did do some research and found out that the Elder Demons were once supposed to be this huge thing back in the day, but they were counseled. They were counseled at that time. So for the Elder Demons to pop up and for this to be put on my radar, I definitely think it's a believable leak because you have the elder gods shouldn't that the demons have some type of organized crime i mean chronica did preach that the balance between good and evil must stay you know let's say level but we have elder guards we have titans how many titans have we seen none we've only seen chronica as a titan the elder guards we don't even know who they are other than raiden that's it. And I think Raiden is Raiden an elder guard. I think he like half guard, demigod or something like that. He's either demigod, but it's about time that we dig deep into the lore of these villains. And this is why we're going to be getting an ancient evil. We're getting an ancient evil for Mortal Kombat 12. I want you guys to watch this when Mortal Kombat 12 come out. I want you to come back to this video and watch it and see how much stuff that I was right about in the comments. I definitely want you to put that there but elder demons and we're supposed to be getting three new 
characters that's the part right there that got me is the three new characters because they're always looking to build their roster and to introduce new people now some people will be getting a break so as some people you won't see in mk12 that was in mk11 i'm thinking it's going to be baraka it's probably going to be scarlet and it's probably going to be let's say cabal we probably won't get cabal uh you know they got to take three people out to put three people in so i don't see cabal returning from mortal kombat 12 that's just my opinion on that one part right there but i wanted to put that up here to show you that's the direction and approach that they're going to be taking and plus it's a reboot of all this series anyway right so they're following the same formula that they followed before so they can create this new and final timeline with that being said you know what time it is hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications and i'm gonna let ed boom go ahead and take it away as to what's to come next go ahead ed do your thing do your thing since the 90s every mortal kombat game um that i'm going to be involved with is going to have scorpion and sub-zero i don't think um I don't, I don't think anybody can really imagine those those characters not in a mortal kombat game so i just had to throw that clip in there for the haters in the comments lol i just wanted to throw that in there of ed boom confirming that sub-zero and scorpion will be a part of every mortal kombat game on the planet as long as he's in charge of the franchise and the last time i checked ed boom is still the creator that the creative director and co-creator of the mortal kombat series so for those of you scorpion fans out there and sub-zero fans fire and ice i'm here to tell you that fire and ice has been confirmed for every mortal kombat game on the planet there will never be another mortal kombat game without them in it now i know i mentioned in the past that scorpion and sub-zero will probably not be in mortal kombat 12 well that has been cleared up because i told you when they do ancestors they're going to be swapped out with those palettes where you can add another skin to replace the voices and things of that nature now a lot of you said what about scorpion's ancestors well as i mentioned scorpion was created by quan chi so he does not have any ancestors however hanzo asachi hanzo hasashi does have ancestors or whatever the case is we don't know who they are but he do have a descendant and his descendant is cole young that is canon so cole young will be making an appearance in mortal kombat 12 as either a skin or as a, as a skin to scorpion or as a full character or cole young is going to be in the game and then scorpion is going to be his ancestor and scorpion will be available via skin swab or whatever the case you whatever you want to call it but i can tell you they're going to get cole young in that game because they're looking to build their franchise their roster and to bring more value to the mortal kombat universe that's what's going to happen there so ed boom go ahead and take it away let's move on to the next part of this documentary let's go but since we have so many characters from the previous games we're doing a lot to introduce some of the classics that haven't been seen for you know eight years you know characters like nightwolf sindel and uh, as well as some of the favorites from Deadly Alliance, like uh, Blind Kenshi and Boraicho. A lot of this game, a lot of Mortal Kombat Deception is the result of feedback that we've gotten from players. And, you know, they wanted to see certain characters return, they wanted to see certain features return, and a lot of it is kind of like our response to, that, to those uh, requests. All right, so you see, Ed Boon is huge on fan service. We all know one plus one equals Melina, meaning that he's always going to cater to the fans to make sure fan demand is ran high. Now, <clears throat> I know a lot of you in the comments are going to mention, well, they're bad at customer service. They're bad at responding. We had the whole den the deer NRS trending. Well, I'm here to tell you that Ed Boon has a completely different contract now than he had back then. And that's the gaming industry in general. They're under NDAs. I'm a business owner. A NDA contract is nothing to play with. An NDA stands for a non-disclosure agreement. You cannot speak about the projects that you're working on until the embargo has been lifted or until you get to a certain state of completion on whatever project you're working on. I have projects right now in my real life that I'm working on that I can tell nobody about. Otherwise, I'll get sued. And if I do tell people and it doesn't go the way it's meant to go, it makes the company look bad and you lose credibility. So half the time they cannot respond to some of these things because WB has the final say so at the end of the day. 
and WB is an old company who runs by traditional values, which really sucked in 2021. They should really just give Ed full control of the gaming department. Go ahead and promote that man and put him over a lot of games. And I'm pretty sure the budget for Mortal Kombat will be put through the roof extensively. So that way they can do a lot of things that they want to do. So that's that. Let's go ahead and get into this next clip. And I'm going to get ready to get y'all up out of here soon. But let's go ahead and finish this documentary trying to take the approach of not only listening to what the players want, but also giving them something that they're not expecting. And really nobody in the industry is really expecting us to do something like this. The natural progression of a fighting game is usually focusing in on just the mechanics of fighting. We've done that, but we've also really tried to take massive steps in terms of just uh, improving the entire experience. of. So you heard it from him yourself. They're always looking to give players something that they're not expecting. We were not expecting to get the type of crip that we got in Mortal Kombat 11. We were not expecting to get those customized skins. That was not expected. We were not expected to get Combat League. We got that. We got Mercies. We got Brutalities. We got a lot of things we weren't expecting. Okay, the Brutalities were expected. I'm pushing it there. But you get my drift at this point, right? You get my drift. So you only can imagine that that's going to continue and by them bringing back conquest mode to tell multiple stories and to introduce almost every character that would be great because look how well deception was put out where you can run around the realms and meet your favorite characters do side missions and get some stories from them on some GTA stuff. So you got to think that that will return because that's how you grow all your characters at one time. Here take it over it. That was a new feature which we're calling the Harry Carry move. But basically the player can finish himself off and, and not give the uh, opponent the satisfaction of doing it. All right. So you heard it there for yourself. You heard it for yourself. Harakaris. We have not had that in a very long time. And I think in 2021, those would be great because there are a lot of people that salty when they lose online. And they would rather harm themselves before they allow you to take them out of the game on some flashy stuff. So you can expect to see those in Mortal Kombat 12. I can tell you that now. I don't think they're going to bring back animalities because in 2021, it would just be... I'm not going to say it'll be difficult to do from a gaming standpoint, but it would require extra time for them to get that together. And they did have nothing but time during this pandemic, but I just honestly see Harakari's coming back and not um, animalities. I don't see those coming back just yet because those type of things have to be introduced with lore properly. Back in the day, they could just turn into animals and we'll accept it. Nowadays, everything has to be, everything has to be accept it or have some type of backstory to it so it's going to be a little while before we get the animalities but if we do get them trust and believe i will enjoy them and i will be using it on almost every opponent that i can get my hands on i'll tell you that much but let's go ahead and continue this documentary i'm gonna go ahead and let ed take back over and uh i'll be right back with the rest of my commentary taking the approach with mortal kombat to try to be different from the other games i think a lot of the other games try to mimic each other and try to you know incorporate certain features and maybe enhance it on that whereas mortal kombat has always tried to be just the most outrageous fun experience for the player you know the most accessible fighting game that there is out there and i think that really shows by how many games we we tend to sell with every version so he basically confirmed what I said earlier, that he always wants to be different. He don't want to be like no other game out there because if you compete that way, you'll lose every time. You always got to have one up on your opponent. You got to have your own style. You got to have your way that you do things. You got to do things different. For example, me making these Mortal Kombat videos, I'm probably the only YouTuber on YouTube that's currently putting out daily Mortal Kombat videos that are this detailed, this edited with great content, with knowledge and learnable and teachable things. I'm probably the only one that's doing that right now and by me being african-american i'm pretty sure i'm probably the only one in that category at least one with the amount of followers that i have so it comes to show you got to be different and you got to have a niche on what you're doing if you want to stand out like why you think you guys are watching this video right now because you know i'll give you long content 
I'll give you the facts, I'll give you the opinions, and I'll also give you the leaks also, and I'll tell you to take all the leaks with a grain of salt because I'm being authentic, and you like that. You don't like me trying to deceive you or you wouldn't support the channel, you know? So that just proves my point there, but Ed is always looking to be different with his content. I'm gonna let him take back over and we are gonna get into the next part. Of this. I think that really shows by how many games we, we tend to sell with every version, and that's, kind of like our approach to, to making the new games has always been let's create something new as opposed to trying to mimic something that was already done on another game and enhance that. Mortal Kombat Deception's Conquest mode is really kind of like a game in itself. It really has um, a lot of elements, RPG elements, adventure game elements, and at the same time it serves as like a training system for people who don't know fighting games too well. It teaches you the basics of the punching, the kicking, the maneuvering around your opponent. And at the same time, it's kind of our, our, it's really like an avenue for us to tell the most expansive story that we have in any Mortal Kombat game. What I say earlier, told you, he just confirmed it. They use conquest mode to tell an expansive story. Let me be honest with you. Mortal Kombat has been living in a loop for the last couple of years. We both know they've been doing reboot after reboot after reboot, and the game just has not progressed. Now, the comics is a different story. We got new characters from the comics and everything, but a lot of people don't read the comics. A lot of people just play the games. They play the games and they keep up with the high popular, the high popular lore. That's just that. So bringing back conquest modes allows them to introduce new characters and to give brand new characters the opportunity to be in the game to where they can build a backstory. Just imagine deception in the year 2021 where you can go back and you can do side missions, but you learn so much about the characters. You can find artifacts like the swords, the weapons, the medallions, and you can find ancient books that tells you about Mortal Kombat and tells you that there's a secret island. And if you find the island, you can get a premier god skin or you can find the Titans old outfit or get a secret fatality kind of like how it was at first that is needed we need that in today's generation of gaming we need that that's what we need but look i'm gonna let ed go ahead and take over and we're gonna go ahead and get y'all on up out of here in the fighting game mortal kombat deception is uh has added a new feature called, we call the death traps where basically some of the backgrounds have areas that are dangerous where you can take damage not only um, take damage, but some backgrounds will actually have um, an area that will kill you instantly. So you can be losing around, have no energy left, and uh, lure your opponent into a, the one death trap, throw them into a big meat grinder, and boom, you've won the round. And that whole kind of unpredictable, you know, turn the tables approach to the, to the fighting game is really something that's new. And uh, is gonna, it's gonna be interesting to see how people um, use that strategy online as well as off. All right, so I wanted to throw that in there. Would you guys like to see Death Traps return in Mortal Kombat 12? I most certainly would love to have Death Traps back because you can be a spammer, a cheater, whatever you want to be. But once I smack you into one of them ceiling fans and you get blended up like a mocha latte or like a slushy, that's what's going to make me excited. I think that would really give that feeling, like he said, that anything can happen. And Mortal Kombat 11 was designed it, designed to feel like anything can happen, especially with the whole, what is it called? The crushing, no, the fatal blow system where you can just make a complete comeback. Anything can happen. You can get hit with that at any time. What better way to make that feel more authentic than bringing back these death traps? I think that'd be great. But then if they did that, would they have to make the games 3D again? I don't think I'm ready for another 3D Mortal Kombat game because you sidestep me. I'm throwing the controller at your forehead. That's what's going to happen. Simple as that. But listen, I want to go ahead and point these things out. I do appreciate you guys watching this documentary. Be sure to share it with a friend. Um, the lore of combat will be returning soon when I come back off my mini vacation. You will get more episodes of that. If you haven't done so already, now would be the perfect time to subscribe and turn on post notifications and like the video. 
I want you to share this video everywhere. Share it on Facebook, share it on Reddit, share it on Discord, share it on Twitter. Let's get the word out. If you're a true Mortal Kombat fan, let's get the conversation started. We're not gonna sit around and wait for official news. We're gonna report everything that we have. We're gonna use speculations. We're gonna use leaks. We're gonna use conversational points because why? We are MK fans to the death of us, to the heart. We are MK fans. And I love nothing more than making content for you guys that is one of my most favorite things to do and i want you to know that so please continue to support the channel and i'll continue to supply the content sounds like we got a deal to me also memberships will be coming soon i'm working on some super cool stuff for memberships that's going to be like no one else's memberships mine's is going to be completely different on top of that i also have the merch merch is available so you can go on my page and you can click the store right next to the community tab and you can purchase some of that mk merch that i have i will be putting out new merch now i'm not going to take up no more of your time i know you just came here to see the video you didn't come to hear about merch and all this other stuff so i'm gonna go ahead and let y'all get on up out of here be sure to check out my other two documentaries the first one called the revenge the return of onaga the one and the one being Yes, people, I'm aware Onaga is not the one being, but at one point he was. I'm aware. You can stop leaving it in the comments. I'm aware. When it comes to Shinnok's documentary, Shinnok and Kronika looks to get their revenge on Liu Kang. Check out that documentary and listen to my theory as to why they are still alive. Gotta go. Catch you later.